Hey, y'all. So I wanted to do kind of like a little Bible study with you all today. Um, basically, the other day I was reading a scripture, I was reading around in Job, and I read something that kind of caught my eye. And after I read it, of course, I had to do a little bit more research to kind of make sense of it to me. So I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about that on today. I don't know if you all are, you know, have the same questions about it or the same struggles as me, but I wanted to, you know, at least talk about it and share with you all to kind of try to help out in whatever way that I can, because I know that I really got a lot of uh, revelation from this passage. So basically where I was reading at, I was over in chapter seven of Job. Um, if you go back and, and, and start reading around in Job, this is around the part where you know Job's everything has gone wrong in Job's life his friends have come to talk to him and now he's just kind of literally the pa the title of this passage of scripture is um Job cries out to God so now we're at the point where Job is just like at his literal wit's end his friends are telling him oh you know maybe this is happening because you you did this big sin that God is punishing you for and Job's like what that makes no sense so now he's literally so just like confused and, and, and just at wit's end that he cries out to God and this really spoke to me because if you read um, if you read down in if you read just in verses through verses 6 to I want to say about 11 in verse 11 he literally says I cannot keep from speaking I must express my anguish my bitter soul must complain and then he goes on to talk about how he, he, he wants to sleep to, to ease his misery and and you know he would rather be dead like strangled than to suffer like this and it, it, it kind of spoke to me because I was reading this devotional that kind of trans like translated it as saying um, that Job literally was in so much anguish over his situation that he had to cry out to God. And we hear that a lot in scripture. I hear that, I know I hear that a lot in scripture. But once I really thought about it and really kind of like meditated on what they were saying, I realized that I didn't necessarily understand it. You know how you think you understand something and then you think about it and you're like, you know what, I don't actually understand this because you know, throughout my, what, 20 years of life, I have been through countless, yeah, I've been through situations. Everybody goes through situations. And I'll be in situations and you'll hear people say, or you'll, you'll, you'll hear in the Bible people saying that they cried out to God. But do I really understand what that means? Because I know that I personally really get caught up in that I'm okay type of mindset like you're going through something and you know deep down that it is a painful situation and you know it's it's hurting you but you, you try to put on a brave face and just say I'm okay and and you know you'll do that towards other people you know people ask you what's going on you're like I'm okay nothing I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine the two like most complicated <laughs> words that there are and I know that I myself am guilty of the I'm fine syndrome I'm guilty of that because I will be you know something is really troubling me in my spirit but I'm afraid I'm afraid to express how how upset that the situation has made me because I don't want to make it seem like you know like I'm complaining or like I'm not grateful for what God has given me and then also you know I'm gonna try to look towards the bright side because I know that if I really dwell on how upset I feel or how badly the situation is affecting me then I'll you know, I'll get into that negative mindset and once I get into that negative mindset you know the devil is just working up here and there's no turning back so I try to I, that's that's my reasoning 
for why I keep getting caught up in the I'm fines is I say that it's because I'm trying to make sure that I'm looking at things positively. But reading reading about Job and his situation, especially chapter 7, really got me thinking about how there's a time when you need to, you know, not think about that negative thing or not dwell on that negative thing. But there's also a time when you need to cry out. Because I also know that I have personally experienced where something was just like an awful situation and I just broke down. And it was weird or it was different because the, the kind of breaking down that I did, like the crying, it wasn't like that bondage type crying crying but it was that freeing type crying where I literally like went into my prayer closet and I laid on the ground and I tried to pray I tried to you know talk it out but the only thing that would come out when I opened my mouth was just sobs and I was just sobbing to God and I felt a lot better afterwards like I literally just sat there and cried for the longest time I'm sure God was looking at me like <laughs> I literally was just like sobbing for the longest time and then finally afterwards I felt better and I was actually able to you know talk it out with him and I think a lot of the time I kind of myself personally kind of got caught up in this mindset as to where you know don't complain don't you know don't don't show it don't show how badly this may have impacted you or show how you know upset you really are because you need to you know look on the bright side and and what happens is a lot of the time getting getting stuck in that mindset a lot of the time it makes me end up holding things in that shouldn't be held in so I started thinking about uh, everything that my husband and I have been going through trying to get pregnant and I thought about how sometimes I just am so at my wits end about what's going on just I don't understand why it's been happening like this I don't understand why it's taking so long I don't understand you know what I did or or, or how I might have messed this up and you know you just kind of get in that mindset where it's like I don't know what to do next I don't know what to think I don't know what to feel I'm just I'm at a loss and there's this kind of this desperation within you not to like not not well for me not like desperate for this situation to happen but just desperate for understanding and just knowing that you know it can give me some peace of mind because you know at least if I know that I just committed this great sin like Job's friends were saying at least if I know that you know I can work on that but if you're going through a situation and you literally just can't think of like like why why is this happening if you literally just like have no idea sometimes it can get really frustrating because you don't know you know you you don't know do I need to be repenting for for something or or you know what's going on and I know that in my situation and in what I've been going through with my husband and and trying to conceive and everything it gets like that there are literally times where I'm just like why why do I have the desire for a child and yet I can't have one yet and I try not to get into that questioning type thing with God because I don't want to I don't want to I'm, I'm not going to question God because I know that everything that's happening is happening for a reason but I also know that there are times when within me my flesh it just cannot handle the stress of the situation and sometimes I want to cry out I want to cry out from the bottom of my heart but I just I don't want to release it because I just want to I want to be fine I say I'm fine because I want to be fine so then when I read this scripture when I read about Job and everything that he was going through and how you know he he he, he went through the I'm fine at first in the beginning people were telling him no 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 he was like no I'm fine but then finally his situation just it weighed too heavily on his shoulders and he just cried out to God and what amazed me was that after that that was when God spoke back to him that was when God started you know the speaking to him and really changing his situation and I started thinking to myself is that is this where my breakthrough lies 
is this my next step is to really just cry out not just you know once or twice or, or not just you know when I'm feeling desperate but to just cry out so I started to I started to wonder and I decided you know what let me do some more research so I started to look up some scriptures and you know it was like Job kind of opened my opened my mind to it but these scriptures literally just like transformed and like revelation all over the place so these are the scriptures that I found um, the first one is Judges chapter 3 verse 9 and I'm gonna read it to you all and you know we can see what revelation y'all get from it so it's Judges chapter 3 verse 9 and I read it in the English Standard Version and it reads but when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel who saved them Othniel the son of Kenaz Caleb's younger brother and what was significant to me you'll have to let me know in the comments what was significant to you about this scripture and about the ones that come forth uh, next that precede this one but um what really stuck out to me was when at the beginning of the verse we hear that the people of Israel cried out to God so it started off they were in this situation and they were just at their wits end and all they could do next was just cry out to God and what amazed me was that they cried out to God and he heard them and immediately raised up somebody to save them and what I thought was really cool is that it doesn't say that he did it immediately it doesn't say that he saved them immediately but it says that God immediately raised somebody up and that's significant because you never know maybe in whatever situation you're going through maybe God hears you crying out and he has already raised up or he's already put into motion what is going to save you and what is going to get you out of this situation but maybe it hasn't yet come yet maybe it's looming over your head waiting to save you and waiting to get you out of the situation but God hasn't yet released it and I know a lot of the time I personally get kind of caught up in that mindset of you know I'm crying out to God but is he hearing me and this scripture was really just kind of like assurance to me that you know he hears and a lot of the time once he hears it he's already working on you know working it working it all together for your good but maybe you don't see it immediately so I really I really like that scripture for that reason so that was Judges chapter 3 verse 9 if you want to write it down or, or you know highlight it in your own Bible I like to highlight things in my Bible app so that I can read them later on so the next scripture that we're going to take a look at is 2 Chronicles chapter 13 verse 14 and I'm going to be reading this one from the New Living Translation. I like to move around in translations a lot. I usually switch between the English Standard Version, the New Living Translation, the Amplified Version, and the message version so those are some of my favorites because I kind of like to see it written in different ways oh and I also enjoy the New King James and of course the King James at times so um, I like to kind of move around just to kind of make sure that I understand the scripture fully because different translations will have different word usages that really make a difference so um second Chronicles chapter 13 verse 14 New Living Translation reads when Judah realized that they were being attacked from the front and the rear, they cried out to the Lord for help. And then the priests blew the trumpets. And this verse stuck out to me because once again we've got the uh, we've got these people. They realize that they're in a situation that is too heavy and that is too burdensome, and all they have left to do is cry out to God. And what I really liked about this was that they cried out to God, and then they blew the trumpets, which means that they started praising God. So I really like that because they were in the situation and they cried out to God, and then immediately after they started praising. Praising God and so that kind of ta taught me a lot about what to do in this crying out process you know cry out to God and then praise him because you already have faith that he's going to move on your behalf and that he's going to work that situation out so a lot of the time I, I kind of got confused about the crying out thing because I didn't really know how that 
is going to cause God to move in your life. So this verse really kind of illuminated it for me. It really made me realize, okay, so step one, cry out to God. Step two, praise and worship God in believing and in having faith that he is going to move on your behalf and that he is going to change your situation and, you know, deliver you, basically. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, once again, if you want to write that one down, that one was 2 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 14. Next, we are going to take a look. We're going to head over into the Psalms. And this is important because if you, if you really go through and read the book of Psalms, uh, every, you know, most people know that David wrote a lot of the Psalms. And what I really like about David is that David was not afraid to cry out to God. And even not just David, but the other psalmists, what I really like about Psalms is that Psalms is basically this book of just crying out to God and praising and worshiping God. And I really, I really love that because David and the other psalmists, they are not afraid to cry out to God. And what was amazing to me if you go through and read psalms is that they'll cry out to God and then immediately start praising Him afterwards. So that goes back over into what we were talking about in 2 Chronicles. And what, what also, if you think about it this way, David cried out to God a lot. But look at the relationship that David had with God. David had such a close relationship with God and it wasn't until I started doing my research and studying and crying out to God that I realized is that why David has such a strong relationship with God because he cries out to God and is vulnerable and tells God what upsets him tells God what he's going through and 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 why he or, or or why he's feeling the way that he's feeling, but also that after he go, after he expresses uh, his anguish, after he cries out, he starts praising and he starts saying, you know, he'll he'll start off by saying, I feel so bad, but I trust you. You know, I'm going through this situation, but I know that you are God, and that's really significant to me. I didn't even realize that until I started researching on crying out to God. So. I'm only going to read two psalms for you right now, but you really could literally like go through the book of Psalms and find a bunch of examples of crying out to God and, and praising and worshiping Him afterwards. So um, first we're going to start off with Psalm chapter 34 verse 6. And I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation as well. And this one reads, In my desperation I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. There we go. So the psalmist was desperate. They were in this situation that was just like, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to turn. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. I am desperate for a change. I am desperate for deliverance. I am desperate for something to move and change within my life. So all I can think of to do at this point, the only thing that makes sense to me at this point is God. So I am going to cry out to him and I'm going to express what I'm going through. I'm going to express what I'm feeling. But immediately after know that God is going to save me and deliver me from my situation. So immediately after after they cried out, God heard them in their desperation. God, you know, is near to those who are going through to the poor and to the downtrodden. God heard them in their desperation and guess what? He saved them from all their troubles. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what else I can say about that. Amen. So <laughs> again, that was Psalm chapter 34, verse 6. So then, what, I, what else I thought was really cool, I decided to read this in another translation. So I took a look at this in the English Standard Version. And this, ver this version reads it like this. This poor man, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and said, saved him out of all his troubles. So I really like that the English Standard Version specified that this was a poor man. And what you also have to think about is that when the Bible says poor, especially in this context, 
they may not necessarily just be talking about financially wise. They may just be talking about being poor in spirit. His spirit is, is, is faint. He's feeling poor in spirit. And, and I really like that they specified it like that. So, amen to that. So, next, we're going to take a look at Psalm chapter 61, verse 2. And I'm going to read this to you all from the English Standard Version. And it reads, From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So let's break this down from the end of the earth, from the end of my situation, from the end of what I'm going through, from the end of my wits and my understanding and my tolerance for the situation, from the end of the earth, I call to you, God, I call and I cry out to you when my heart is faint. So this goes back to that being poor in spirit. My heart is faint. My heart is weak. My heart can't handle anything else. So I am crying out to you, God. Lead me. So now they're saying, I'm crying out to you. Now lead me to the rock, to the source of strength, this sturdy, sturdy source of strength, as in God, that is higher than I, that has higher understanding, that has a higher position, and that knows and sees all things. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to God, who is higher and has a better understanding and a better point of view than I. Amen. I mean, wow. <laughs> this is this this psalmist is crying out and saying. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to think next. So lead me to the person, to the one person, to the God that is higher than I and that has a greater understanding than I and who knows what I'm going through and why I'm going through it and what is next. Lead me to him. I don't want to deal with, I don't want to deal with, you know, man, I don't want to deal with this person. I don't want to deal with that person. I want to deal with God. I want to hear from God. I want to be, I want, I want to go straight bypassing everybody else and going straight up to God and saying that I am tired of the situation that I'm going through and I'm going to cry out to you. I truly enjoy that verse because that just, it just amazed me how they just asked for God's guidance. And a lot of the time I think we go through situations and we talk about how bad the situation is, but do we ask for God's guidance to, to you know, get us out of that situation and lead us in the direction that we must go? And that's important too, you know, as we were talking about before, number one, cry out, number two, Praise God. Number three, ask God to guide you in the direction that he wants you to go in. How can God take me out of one situation and not lead me into the direction that I need to go in? After God gets me out of my situation, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? So that's him or you asking for that guidance. So I truly enjoyed that. And um, once again, that was Psalm chapter 61 verse 2. Now, the last, but definitely not the least, and in fact, one of my favorite, one of the, the most impactful verses to me. We are going to go straight to, you know, we heard from the psalmist, we heard from the people of Israel. We are going straight to the Savior of the universe. We are going to hear from Jesus who cried out to his Father, who cried out to God. We are going to go right to when he was hanging on that cross. The, at, we may go through situations that feel desperate and that may feel like we are at the bottom of this pit. But until you have been stretched out on a cross for sins that you didn't even commit, Jesus was not only at his lowest, but he was at our lowest. He was stretched out on a cross 
being tortured for sins he didn't even commit. Talk about anguish. Talk about trials and tribulations. I can't think of a, a bigger trial or tribulation than that. So this is when Jesus Christ himself cries out to God. So turn with me. <laughs> turn with me. Look at your neighbor and, and say, neighbor, turn with me to Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. And I'm going to read this to you guys from the English Standard Version. And this is going to be our last scriptural example for this video for now. Um, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Y'all might want to write this one down, bookmark it, highlight it, write it on a sticky note, join the sticky note ministry, put it up all around your, around your house, just to remind yourself what truly tr crying out to God is. So, <laughs> let me read this to you guys. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabach, sabachthani. So, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken me as in why have you turned your back on me? Why have you left me in this desperate and in this low place? Why have you left me? This is Jesus Christ himself who is directly connected to the Father. Jesus Christ himself saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? And this verse is significant not only because this is Jesus Christ and not only because he cried out in a loud voice and he wasn't quiet about this thing. He was loud. He was loud speaking in Hebrew. Eli, Eli, Lemma Sabachthani. I don't even, I, I don't even think I pronounced that right. <laughs> this is Jesus crying out in Hebrew. And he said, my God, as in my father, why have you forsaken me? And let's think about this a little bit deeper. Let's think about this less as Jesus crying out to God. And let's think about this as a son crying out to his father. He is in a desperate situation. He is in a painful situation. And he feels alone. And he feels like, he feels like God has left him. He feels like the Holy Spirit has left him. He feels like his father has left him. This is a son crying out to his daddy saying, Daddy, where are you? Why have you left me? Why can't I see you? Why can't I feel you? And the importance in this is that God didn't leave him. He was just so blinded by the sins of the world. He was so blinded by our sins that he couldn't see God anymore. See, God couldn't connect to Jesus the way that he normally does. He couldn't have that strong and powerful connection to him because he was so tainted by our sins. But that doesn't mean that he left him. Just like that doesn't mean that in our sin and in our situations, God left us. We're just so blinded by our sin that we can't see him. And sometimes we'll cry out. And there's a difference between crying out and blaming God and crying out and seeking God. And I think that was where a lot of my struggle came in at, is that I didn't want to cry out and blame God. I wanted to cry out and seek God. I didn't want to turn, point a finger at God and say, why have you done this to me? Where are you at? What? I didn't want to blame God. But I wanted to seek God in saying that this is what I'm going through and I need your peace, I need your comfort, I need your joy, I need you in this situation. And that is probably the most powerful verse that I've read to you all in the past, what, like 20 minutes. That is like the most 
powerful voice, or verse, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ himself. So, like I said, I hope y'all bookmarked that. I hope y'all highlighted that, wrote that down. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. If you don't take anything else from, from this video, from what I'm talking to you about, take that. Take that scripture. Don't, don't, you don't gotta listen to me. Listen to the word of God. Listen to Jesus Christ himself. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. So I truly hope that this study has helped y'all as much as it has helped me. This has completely just transformed the way that I go through situations and the way that I see God. Instead of kind of seeing him as, as somebody too high that I can't reach him, now I see him as the father who wants me to cry on his shoulder, who wants me to cry out to him and turn to him in my, in my, in my desperation and in my situation. So I truly hope that this has helped you as much as it has helped me. Please let me know. Comment below. Let me know what you got from this, what revelation you got. And let me know about what scriptures you turn to or that you think about when you think about crying out to God. Let me let me know. I'm, there are plenty of them in the Bible. So let me know which one it is that I may not have mentioned that really speaks to you. And, and which ones that I, I mentioned that may have spoken to you as well. And uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. You never know who may be in a situation and they may need to cry out to God. Uh, so share it with your friends and family or your loved ones. Whoever. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, yada, yada, yada share it and make sure that you subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos new bible studies and new things that we talk about uh subscribe like this video you know show me some support you know i want to keep talking to you guys about things and, and being able to really spend that time with you so just you know try to support me as i try to support you all and always you know comment let me know how else I can support you. If you have any questions for me or if you have any, you know, um, Bible questions or, or things that you wanted me to look into for you, please feel free, comment below, let me know. I'll do my best to get you some answers and to really pray about it and, 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 and study on it and get you your answers that you need. So um, thank you guys so much for watching on today. Thank you so much for listening to me, you know, babble on and on. And uh, for just all the support and the love that you give me. This is truly what keeps me going. And I really hope that I was able to help you in some way. And so um, just remember, as I, as I like to say and I find myself saying a lot, God is good all the time, even in your trials and tribulations, even in your desperate place even in whatever you're going through. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you for watching. I'm